St. John chapter 12. And uh, while you're turning there, let me just give you a little background of this. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. You may say, well, why is it one of your favorite? Because Jesus, amen, was anointed at Bethany. Amen. When you turn there, you'll see in those first few verses, amen, how that, uh, amen, that, that uh, he was uh, at supper at Martha and Mary's house and Lazarus, and Mary had took a pound of a very costly perfume, and she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. I like reading about that. And then, also, you can read in chapter 12, we won't do all that today, but, amen, uh, Jesus, amen, they put him on a donkey, and he rode into Jerusalem, and the people took branches of palm trees, and they went out to meet him, and they cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen? I like that part, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Yes, yes. And then, of course, amen, Jesus predicts His death. He predicts His death on the cross. He said, If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men or people unto myself. Amen? amen? And then also you read about how that there's so many could not believe and the prophet Isaiah hundreds of years ago said, that he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, at least they should see with their eyes, and at least they should understand, amen, with their heart and turn, so that I should heal them. We see where they had hardness of heart. Sister Kilby talked about how the scales came from her eyes when she was in the hospital. But in this case, they were blinded to what Christ, amen, had to say to them. And so, this is an exciting, exciting chapter. So, I just want to point out, pick out a couple of things here to let you know, brothers and sisters, whatever you're thinking today, and you can tell someone else that Jesus is Lord of all. Amen. Say it with me. Jesus, Jesus is Lord of all. Of all. Yes, Jesus yes. is Lord of all. Of all. Now I'm going to read that one verse again. In verse 32 of John chapter 12, he said, If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people or men unto myself. This, he said, signifying what death he should die. Lord, I ask your blessing upon this congregation right now. We've already sent your presence. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now back on verse 20 of John chapter 12. The Bible said that there was certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip who was uh, from Bethsaida of Galilee and asked him said sir we wish to see Jesus Bill he, he came and he told Andrew and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus but Jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified isn't that interesting Jesus did just say, well, I'm getting ready to leave now and uh, we'll go see these the Greeks that came to see me. But he said, the hour has come. Now that's interesting. The hour has come. Say it with me. The hour has come. As I stated, that there were some Greeks, tourists, who were visiting Jerusalem. They wanted to see the sights perhaps of that famous city and they were there for the Passover festival and the streets were swarming with people while there they heard about a local celebrity who was making quite a name
for himself. And it was said that he had raised some man by the name of Lazarus from the dead. The Greek tourists, they were intrigued. They sought out one of this celebrity's disciple talking about Jesus, a man named Philip. Since Philip was a Greek name, they thought that uh, he might help them meet his master. They told Philip quite plainly, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Now this presented, I want to set the foundation here, this presented a, quite a problem for Philip. Until this moment, Jesus' ministry had been exclusively directed towards the Jew. Amen. Philip was unaware what to do with these travelers. So he found Andrew. Mm -hmm. And together they went to find Jesus. Now, when they found Jesus, they told him that some Greeks wanted to meet him. They knew from experience that Jesus considered no one a nuisance. Amen. All that come unto him, he will receive. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the same today. Amen? Yes. They thought that Jesus would certainly want to meet people who travel such a great distance. But Jesus, however, surprised them. He didn't say a word about going to meet these visitors. No, he didn't. Instead, he viewed this incident as a sign. Mm -hmm. He said, the hour mm -hmm. has come for the Son of Man yeah. to be glorified. Amen. That's what he said. Oh, yes. Now stick with me. Yeah. Listen. We don't know whether Jesus ever met with the Greeks or not. Now based on Jesus, he, he probably did, but I'm not going to add anything what the Bible said. The Bible right. said he never did go and meet the Greeks. All right. Philip probably felt a little bit silly. So, perhaps maybe he left those visitors waiting on him somewhere there in Jerusalem. And here was the master speaking these mysterious words. He said, the hour is come. This was obviously a sign Jesus had been waiting for. Now listen. Someday all people would look to him as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And that's important. Amen. All people would look to Him yeah. as Lord and Savior. And these Greeks, yeah. they were the first, they were the first of people from every race, yes. nation, who would one day call upon His name. All right. yes. Follow me here now. Yes. Come on. Amen? Amen? He said, the hour is come. Amen? Amen. I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is Lord of all. Oh, yes. And that's where I want to begin this message. Mm -hmm. Amen. To let you know that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Yes. Jews and Gentiles, yes. rich person, poor person, yes. righteous and unrighteous. Amen. No one is excluded. Yes. Amen. All of us are equal in His sight. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All of us are equal in His sight. Even people like Linda. Now who is Linda, Pastor? Linda was a homeless cocaine addict. She was experiencing serious health problems, including a heart attack from her addiction. Linda was in a panic, not knowing what would happen to her and her young son. She was at her lowest point in life. One Sunday morning she wandered into a nearby church. She sat in the last pew. The people around her could not help but noticing that she was crying throughout the service. That morning Linda heard the good news about how Christ amen, loved her and would forgive her and about how to make a new start in life. Linda returned the next Sunday. And then the next Sunday after that. But she was reluctant to fill out a visitor's card. She would not fill out a visitor's card. 
But the more she came to church, the more she began to feel the love of those sitting nearby and around her. Amen. And finally one Sunday she filled out a visitor card checking off that she needed help. Amen. She needed help. Oh, yeah. But you see, oh, yeah. amen, this particular church, mm -hmm. they had a visitation program. Uh -huh. Amen. And people throughout the week would visit Amen. They would pay the newcomers a visit. Amen. One of them, amen, that visit lender was named Fred. Uh -huh. He had a gift of hope as well as profound love. And Fred knew that Jesus could help Linda. Yes. So he told her that Jesus could bring healing in her life. Yes. He explained how she could meet Jesus. Then he waited patiently and led her, led her through the sinner's prayer for her to commit her life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Then after that prayer, Brother Hazley, she asked, amen, for, he, they asked Jesus for healing of her addiction. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Several months, Linda was radiating joy as she shared her victory over her cocaine addiction. Yes. Amen. She wanted to share what I found, she said. She said, I want to, amen, work with young people hooked on drugs. Yes. I want them to know that there is hope. Yes. There's hope. Yes. Yes. Linda now works with teenagers who are addicted and, they, and, and are in need of Christ's love and hope. Yes. You see, in some churches, brothers and sisters, Linda might not even have been welcomed. Say Think it. about it. it. How sad. Is when people build fences around the gospel because Jesus is Lord of all. Yes, yes. Jesus is Lord yes. of all. You see, back to the story, some Greeks wanted to see Jesus. You see, they were a preview of what was yet to come. See, the day when all people would look to Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Come on, somebody. But there's a second thing we need to see. There's a cost. There's a cost of being one of His followers. You hear what I'm saying? There's a cost. Amen. You see, uh, when we read that particular 12th chapter, amen, we can see, amen, that, that it costs it calls to become involved and a disciple of Christ. Amen. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. Yes. But if it dies, it will bear much fruit. Amen. This is the paradox of the Christian faith, brothers and sisters. Amen. It is only by losing ourselves that we find new life in Christ. Amen. It is when we bury, when we bear our selfish aims and our ambitions that we are of real use to God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And that, that's what Jesus wanted his followers to understand. He said the green that must fall to the earth, amen, and die was himself. But he also, amen, it, it, it applies to each one of us. Yes. You know what I'm 